Okay. The Blackmagic Ursa Cine Immersive, now available for pre-order today, December 17th, as of recording this video. Remember that one? Not Alex, put the new camera on top of Darth Vader's head right here. Yeah. That is funny. Yes. The Apple Vision Pro has a camera now. The first ever camera built for immersive video for the Apple Vision Pro. Like they're putting a lot of stock in the Apple Vision Pro becoming a long-term success. Yeah, and like, how many Apple Vision Pros have actually been sold? That's a great question, but I will say that Tim Cook came out and said, this is a early adopters product. I think that the V2 will be significantly better. We've talked about that before on this podcast right over here, click this one, but Today, we're specifically talking about the Blackmagic Ursa Cine Immersive, the specs that just came out about it, and I do have some questions about it. I'm excited, but a little tentative, oh. a little tentative. I know I know how finicky you can get with the Blackmagic camera, so I'd love to know how this fits to your standards. Now, I, do, I haven't looked up anything, so I, I don't do know. I do love Blackmagic cameras. I will say the first time, we've already talked about this on the podcast, the first time I ever shot something and thought, oh, this actually looks good, was on a Blackmagic camera. Uh, pocket so I you know whatever but let's talk let's get into the specs so there's two lenses it literally looks like Wally -E. it does it looks so freaky so the spec that we get on this is called a dual custom lens for shooting Apple immersive video that's all that we're told about it and I've looked at these images I see like focal distances no measure of what the minimum focal distance is, but that would be really interesting because huh. when we're talking immersive video, there's gonna be things coming close and moving in the background, but how close can we get for things feeling really 3D and immersive? Don't know. The other thing that isn't speculated here is the focal length. They don't say what the focal length is? There's no focal length what spec do you mean? on your... Now, maybe that's because the standard for Apple Vision Pro is like the human eye. Mm -hmm. But also, if you look at the other photos, it shows what the preview out of the monitor looks like. Right. You get a square for your primary image. And then on top and bottom, you have like the periphery where it would bow oh, right here. Interesting. And then the surrounding area, which makes up, I'm not entirely sure, but essentially 180 degrees. To a degree, it's almost like the output when you can put like the Insta360 in like that globe mode, it kind of looks like that. So yeah, this is interesting that you talked about the Insta360 because that was my comparison about that. The thing that I absolutely love about this is the square that you're shooting is, okay, this is the primary place where people are gonna be looking. Yeah. When you shoot on a standard 360 camera, you're kind of guessing. Yeah, pretty much. Right. I mean, you're kind of just like, Pointing it and seeing what you get, right? Mm -hmm. And hoping that you can, you're not landing on a seam and it editing weird. Exactly. That is another great transition point because they talked about there's only gonna be two, as of right now, there's only two editing softwares that can be used Whoa. for this footage. Okay. Obviously the first one's DaVinci Resolve. No question. Second one is Final Cut Pro and you can run it through XMLs so that these are gonna be massive video files. Right? You can only edit this on proxies, essentially, on, on Final Cut yeah, Pro. No kidding. But the, the cool thing about both pieces of software is you are not going to have to go through your really meticulous stitching process. There's no stitch because oh, it's 180 it's one... degrees. Oh, right? interesting. So basically, if I'm in my Apple Whoa. Vision Pro, I have it and I can still see the edges of whatever screen. Because, yeah. you know, we're not trying to do the illusion of 3D. That's true. But it is more immersive because if I'm just staring straight down the barrel, I will be covering my peripherals. Yeah, that's true. Like if you, you've edited footage on like Premiere that's like Insta360 footage, yeah, right? It's like terrible. It's, terrible. It's, it's terrible. Even with process. the plugin that you get, like it's so annoying. Yeah, and then having to retarget and, and yeah. keyframe where you're mainly looking. Like obviously that's a different application than this. This is like definitely for more cinematic immersive experience. I'm really curious about how focal hmm works with this because yeah. like how does focus work because what if i'm looking at something on the side when you're filming something straight ahead of Whoa, me oh that's true you know what i mean so are there focus rings on this uh there so like that's the thing looking at these photos it does look like there is standard focal distances as though 
they're on other lenses but with that bifocal like with those two lenses yeah can we do like a bifocal thing so that one it's like an average of both i'm not i, I don't know how it works I'm, I'm just gonna be completely transparent interesting now let's talk about both those two lenses they're both 8k both of them are 8k 58.7 megapixels okay okay as like we took a photo or like that's just the quality of like the sensor i guess that's that like is so these are specific to video so this is gonna be like an ultra ultra hd wow immersive experience like wow we have both done the apple vision pro animal test, test yeah. or whatever like i i my one thing about the apple vision pro knowing that it's an early adopter product is once you spend like probably four to six hours in that thing doing all the immersive experiences that's it yeah you know? i mean yeah but but i think what we said last time is that the use case for the apple vision pro i feel like has a lot there's a lot of benefit for content yeah and i feel like I believe was the, was the initial content not filmed with this like for the Apple Vision Pro. I'm, I don't know. I don't know. I'm sure, like I'm sure some form of it was. I remember that one stripped down version. Of that was this. on the drone as well. Yes. Yeah. Because yes. like essentially the idea behind this camera is they're trying to simulate the human eye, and that's what the Apple Vision Pro is doing. It's trying to yeah. enhance or augment your vision, right? So with that, we need 16 stops of dynamic range, which it has. But the problem is that. The human eye is like 18 to 20. Yeah. So obviously we see contrast better than cameras. That's just like, that's, it's getting better, but like we do. When you're in a dark room, you look out a light window, you, your mind just does that and it just makes up the dynamic range. Yeah. Your eyes just do it naturally. The Ari Alexa has 17 stops. Obviously it's like the best camera on the market, but obviously still 16 stops to dynamic range is getting pretty close so i'd say if you're shooting with this don't try to shoot in like a hyper dark room go to light because yeah you'll get that like weird light exposure yeah. when you're viewing something you're viewing it through your human eyes so like in an immersive experience you expect the sensor of your eye to react like the way that it would yeah so what if you are looking at an image and there's a dark part and a light part and you look into the darkness trying to see what it is your eye will auto focus or something or your eye might adjust. focus but will the camera be able to like we don't know yeah right? we don't know That's how these true. things work so the max frame rate of this camera is 90 frames per second okay but the human eye sees 30 to 60 frames per second depending on who you are and what you see. Mm -hmm. Obviously people can see up to 75. I think fighter pilots or something. I don't know, something, something. Well, I've never actually thought about how people can see more frames per second. And what's eyes. your focal length of your eyes? Is that an actual question? Yeah. I mean, I always thought that, you know, from a photography point of view, like 24 to yeah. 35 millimeter is like what, like that focal length of lens is I what emulates right. the eye I think the you're most. right. I think you're right. But and, um, then you got two eyeballs so i don't know if it's like i know together and that's what creates and i don't know it's really strange so that's hmm. why when i'm thinking like what's the focal length of this camera it must be around 24 to 32. interesting I yeah i don't know it must be you know what's the focal length of the apple vision pro i've never thought about that before i don't know but you know <laughs> what we were just we were just at a conference where we met the guy who sold his technology to apple for basically what brings that VR experience almost as close to your eyes as possible. Whoa. So he created the technology where, because the big thing with VR headsets exactly like this is, it looks like you're watching a screen no matter yeah, what. Like right. To be fully immersed, it's difficult. Right. So he created the technology that basically takes that screen you're looking at and basically lines it up exactly with your eyes. So it looks like the most fluid experience, Whoa. right? And I feel like that is obviously what excels with the Apple Vision Pro. It's called a spatial headset, obviously. Mm -hmm. But the fact that there's a camera developed specifically here for and the thing that I like about it, which our wild. speculations before was we were like, how's it going to work with full 3D, whatever, because there are some applications of the Apple Vision Pro that yeah. are like 3D immersive. Yeah. This is not that. And that's what I like about it. It's saying like, this isn't this. We're shooting maximum, I don't know, maybe like a little bit less than 180 degrees in one direction. Yeah. Which is amazing because niching down what you can see when you're shooting makes it easier to shoot it yeah right absolutely it's it's i think it's just really cool to like with this camera it's kind of allowing you to shoot as close to what the human eye experiences as possible yeah. and i feel like that is styles and movie styles the director styles dop styles all that aside 
I feel like every camera, every brand, every phone is always trying to emulate what the eye can see. The eye can just see the best. If you've got really good vision, that's what it is. So I feel like the fact that this is mm -hmm. pretty damn close to possibly to and like create shooting... what the human eye can see is remarkable. And the cool thing about it is we're also shooting in B-Raw. So Oof. like 8K B-Raw up to two hours on their eight terabyte onboard like um, um, recorder, Holy. which is crazy. What are the file sizes of these? They're going to be massive. <laughs> two hours would be eight terabytes. What? <laughs> <laughs> we're shooting on a hard drive right now that's 500 gigs and that's not even going to be close to full by the time we're done this podcast right. two terabytes right or eight terabytes oh my god <laughs> yeah here it says includes high performance black magic media module eight terabyte for recording oh my god is it a module or is that you got to buy that separately because it includes it oh that's here's nice the crazy thing about it Connecting with the Blackmagic cloud system, you can send this live to an editor in DaVinci Resolve. Is that what the antennas are for? Yeah. Oh my gosh. <laughs> that is insane. It's how, crazy. How does it transfer that? What kind of data do, See, what kind of data speeds do you need? that to me is crazy. It says it has a 10 gigabyte ethernet port. So you gotta be plugged in via ethernet. 10 gigabytes per Sheesh. second. 10 gigabytes per second, essentially. That's crazy. Um, that might not be right, though. but still. I don't know. You can also obviously shoot it different, you know. Yeah. Different they don't formats. have to shoot B-Raw. Last question. thing is the okay. price. $29,000. It's actually not crazy. That's not crazy. I mean, again, if this is the exact camera that was used for all of the documentary stuff that was made for the Apple Vision Pro, that's reasonable. Very. Considering that, like, mm -hmm. the quality that you saw in the Vision Pro was pretty damn good. Mm -hmm. It's not the same level as an RE or a RED, but... The I, fact that it's as close, like it looks close to what yes, you can see. Yes. Thirty thousand yeah. dollars, not terrible, because it comes with a lens too. You can't, can you? You can't swap lenses, can you? No. Interesting. So it's a basically a fixed camera. It's coming with the actual hardware. Yeah. That you need to record on. So maybe the only thing you need to purchase are what batteries, if you wanted it. Right. I mean, you're already plugged in right. to an Ethernet, so I mean, you could just plug it in direct. Yeah. So I mean, see, but if it comes with everything. There's like some really cool applications you could use with this camera. Like imagine a shot at human eye level, walking handheld, feeling like you're there. And then it like takes to the sky. Like you could experience like a Superman type situation. Like, oh, it'd be man. so cool. But oh, uh, I want to get my hands on one. Yeah. I, I'd love to see what these first tests look like. Um, and I think the limit to what this is like to the quality that we're going to get out of this camera is genuinely going to be how good is the viewing experience on the Apple Vision Pro? Mm -hmm. How high fidelity is the screen that you're looking at? Yeah. Now, one thing that I don't know if we have yet, which we talked about I, before. We talked about it. I want to, this is what I was about to ask you. So live viewing through the Apple Vision Pro while recording. That's what you said would probably be the case. Now, I, that I was know, your hope. So there's immersive video review for the Apple Vision Pro um, in DaVinci Resolve. So you can put on your Apple Vision Pro while editing. Whoa. And have Whoa. an output of what you're looking at. Okay. I don't know if that's the case for filming yet. I don't Interesting. know. Like surely, surely they've brought it up. Unless you've got an editor on standby and you are hardwired to editor's computer and the editor has the Apple Vision Pro and they're like, yeah, they got a director in there too. And they're like, hey, this ain't, this ain't it. You're missing all yeah, this on the right. side. Because I mean, right. you're going to want to know what you're seeing on the side of the, the, right. the camera. So here is my last example that I thought of right away. Imagine if 1917 Whoa. was shot on this camera. So well, all the crazy stuff is happening with this follow cam one -er of uh, like the, the that Roger Deacon did. Imagine that, but immersive so you can look like you can pan and tilt your head. Oh, that, How's it going to work with VFX? I don't, I don't know. know. Like, That's you know crazy. I mean? <laughs> well, you know what's funny is like, I remember like way back when I started getting like really obsessed of like going to the theaters and watching movies. I was like, how cool would it be if there was a 180 degree movie theater and, we're and th there are some there are some at like right. you know disneyland or whatever but like if you could be able to like film a horror movie in the intention of 180 degrees and it's like 
you force the entire audience to look left and then you jump scare them on the right. Yeah. Like that, that would be so damn cool yeah. as an immersive experience. And then but the second time you watch it, you know what's you happening. See more, well, you so see you more things. You can look to the look left right way. and yeah. see it coming at you. Ugh. Just uh, a completely different experience. An immersive experience is what we'll say. So yeah. there you go. Look out for what's coming with what's going to be produced in this camera when people start picking them up in January of 2025, because that's when they're wow. going to be delivered to them. Should we buy one? Yes.